Greetings traders, this is Houston Trong from thetradingedge.org and this is your weekly market outlook video for April the 8th to the 12th, 2019. So lots transpired this past week and lots coming up in the coming weeks. So let's launch it right into the analysis. So getting into the chart. So today we're going to talk about a number of charts. We're going to cover off our core basket including the VIX, SPY, Qs, Russell and Dow will cover off the long bond, oil, gold, some cryptos, and we'll even do some uh, sector analysis as that reveals something quite interesting and confirms a nagging suspicion that we've had, and I'll just drop it now, is that we're going to all-time highs. And we've been saying that now for yeah, since we've been doing the videos, right? So at least for the past four or five weeks since I've been doing the videos, uh, it's just become quite clear that that is where we're going. So unless something um, really um, dramatic, drastic happens, that's probably going to be the outcome f uh, over the course of the next you know, several weeks or even less than that because we're very close now to those all-time highs. So let's look at the charts and see where we've come and where we're going and what to watch out for this coming week. So the VIX has slowly been grinding lower and lower and lower. And as long as the VIX keeps going down like this, right then the markets are going to continue to grind upwards and this is uh, something we've been watching for a while now right so if we take a look at at uh, the VIX chart let's just begin uh, on the daily chart here now on, on Friday we had that condition where we had outside day inside day then down on Friday and it was kind of grindy on the, on, on the downside right so it's a it's kind of a slow move to the downside but there was no question about the bias so at this point here, the bias is certainly down. There's nowhere else for this thing to go except downwards. So, so at this point now, as you can see, um, we had the situation where it was able to take out the previous uh, lows here that were put in back in March at the uh, at the March nineteenth uh, day, and we took that out on Friday. So finally, we we're able to crack below that twenty eight twelve level. But it's very slow going. So certainly, it's just not just you if you haven't noticed it already. But volatility, you know, obviously by measured by VIX, has been coming in a lot, and this means the actual ranges themselves have actually been coming in quite a bit in terms of the indices as well. So as we get higher and higher into these levels on the equity side, we're getting smaller and smaller rallies. And um, this is something we need to watch out for uh, as we get to close to those all-time highs. Do we just, you know, stumble across all-time highs, or do the buyers really step in and squeeze those shorts who might be out there who are still remaining out there, um, and cause a bit of FOMO and cause these markets to spike up? Because right now we're not getting any kind of uh, um, momentum. It's a slow drip downwards. So as you see here on the VIX side, if you look at the three-month chart, we've been kind of pointing this out for a while now. There's a pattern we've been watching play out for a long time now. So here's the here's the analogy, right? So here on Friday we had that inside outside broke to the downside, right? So when you have that outside inside pattern that breaks, the first pivot it's going to go after is this outside bar's low, and that's what it did. It took out that outside bar low, and it was able to do that. So we have the exact same pattern here now on the three month chart. That's the quarterly chart, right? So there's your outside inside pattern. It broke below there now, right? So 2812 was the low that was put in in March. That's the Q1 low. It broke it on Friday, and so now we have a condition of inside bar and down, and so now the pivot that everyone's going after is this one here, the low of 25.94. If it can break below that, that will create this wider broadening formation, 25.94, marked in green there. That's what we're waiting for right now is to see that level get taken out, and that's the pivot that we're watching. Okay, so this is something we've been watching for a while now. It's just taking very, it's just, it's just a very slow crawl to those levels but that's basically the lows of 2018 right that's the lows that were put in back in October or the or Q3 excuse me so let's go to the next chart spider what can you say but uh, the you know on the spider chart we have um, if you take a look at it same thing here so we have a, a on the three-month chart an inside bar up now and it's going back to the all-time highs and we're really close to those all-time highs if you take a look we're only 1.88% away from those all-time highs. Not far at all, right? And on Friday, we had that day and up signal. So inside day and up signal going right into these high levels now. The question is now, we you know, who's left up here, right? So they have a few more pivots to go after. All we need to get to is, you know, the high here of 293.94. 
and that's going to make us get to all-time highs. So Friday, um, you know, we had that inside bar and up, so the bias was certainly up. No reason to take shorts on Friday, even though it was kind of grinding slower. You know, the easy money was still to the upside. Okay, so on the four-hour chart, what do we end up with here? Well, we had this condition, right? So on Friday, here's Thursday. So Thursday we had a bit of a dip back, we had a bit of a pullback. It pulled right back into the former resistance here, this broadening wedge, this broadening formation resistance. That became the support, came right back in. It created that inside day or inside four hour bar, which broke to the upside on Friday. It gapped up. So if you know if you didn't buy it on Thursday, kind of had a chase on Friday, and then you know it moved very slowly to the upside. So at this point now, so long as it stays above this broadening formation, then you know the the buyers are certainly in control. Really, no reason to get bearish at this point, right? And right now the charts are saying nothing about getting short or or, or, or you know, starting to establish short positions. Because you know, if you're expecting a major market reversal, then you want to see the low of this week get taken out. So you want to see 284.40, you want to see that low get taken out, and then you'd have this gap that could potentially get filled here. But you know, depending where we open up here, this is a big bar, it's a 2% bar that the bears have to first navigate and sell through before it can create a major reversal. Okay, so so that's going to take a lot by the bears because right now they haven't exhibited any kind of strength, and that would take a lot to turn this two percent week to a negative week next week. Meaning, you know, you'd have to gap down, or you'd have to open up higher, and then come right back through the range again to cut through that that two percent week. So right now, you know, certainly, you know, you could play the the bounce back to this support level, but the easier money right now is up because the trend is up. Cues, what's that looking like? Right, so the cues. Look at the three month chart. Let's pull it up here. There you go. The Qs are only 1.41% away from all-time highs. Can you picture that, right? So back in Q4, things looked really, really bad, but you know we've come back a long ways, and now we're less than one really good day away from all-time highs, right? So it's really, really close to all-time highs now. So do you really want to be shorting here? The answer is probably not. Right now, you want to trade with the trend because these all-time highs are attractor levels, right? Everyone's gunning for them. Now, once you get above those all-time highs, then the game gets harder because who knows how far it goes at that point. It's just a matter of momentum at that point. Then you have no more references. But until you get above those levels, this is probably the easiest trade you'll ever find, right? To, to, get, to get long from here to there. So you have to find a good trade location and look to get to these all-time highs. So on the queues, you have that three-month chart. And if you look at the two-day chart here on, uh, on the queues, what do we get? Well... Uh, sorry, is that a two-day chart? We want to start at the four-hour chart, excuse me. On uh, Thursday, we had that bull a bit of a selling that came back and you know, kind of started on Wednesday. Thursday pulled in, right? Look where, look where it found support, right on that broadening formation line that we drew many, many weeks ago now. It's come right back onto here, and it created an outside-inside condition, which resolved to the upside, right? So it gapped up on Friday morning. It took out that pivot, and now they're working taking out that pivot there. 184.92. All right, so right now the trend is up. So do not fight the trend because I will tell you why I'm so, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident that the queues are going to hit all time highs is because you know what's already hit all time highs? We've already talked about some of these things in past videos, but things like Microsoft have already hit all time highs and they've come back a bit, but they've already hit all time highs. But look at this look at the XLK, which is, you know, the tech sector ETF. It's a, a basket of like the, um, the, the top 100 uh, NASDAQ stocks, something like that. It's already hit all-time highs. On Friday, excuse me, on, uh, on uh, Wednesday, it hit all-time highs. So there you go. There's the pattern we've been talking about for a while now, the outside-inside pattern. It broke to the upside, and it took out that pivot there. 76.27, it took it out right there on the 3rd. Uh, sorry, that's 26. So which one day is it? Uh, what is it? What, 27? 26 was so close actually so it looks like it hasn't quite done it yet so it was one penny away so literally one penny away and you're going to get that uh, all-time high on xlk so I, I misspoke there we haven't quite hit all-time highs on xlk but it's very 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 close so we had someone who just you know was, wasn't quite able to break above that uh, that level so you know this here now on friday we end up with this inside four hour bar which way does it break and again, the bias has to be to the upside, right? Or eventually, they're going to take all that pivot. Because you know that if anyone's 
still short this thing, you probably have sellers who, if, if you know they're they have long shots, they're like, okay, I'm gonna cover when it breaks above all time highs. And then at that point, you know, you're gonna have some more buyers step in as they as they play the breakouts. So that level is near guaranteed to get taken out if you can get back up there again. Okay, so let's talk take a look at Russell now, IWM. So the Russell starting on the uh, four hour chart. We had this condition where we went, we went uh, inside bar and up. Same thing on the daily. So on Friday, pretty straightforward, inside day and up. This is the pattern on the weekly. We've been watching for, for a while now, right? So we were, when it pulled back, remember a couple weeks ago, when it broke below the inside bar low and it looked really bad for a second, it looked like we could, we could turn, pull things down and go downward. Well, what we see, what we see happen here, right? The buyer stepped in right away. And then when that week closed out, I said, if they can take out the highs of this bar, this pivot is in play. And sure enough, they took out this pivot right there on this day here at the opening of the week. And they was just a matter of time before they took out that pivot. So on Friday, they took out that pivot and they went even higher. So the next pivot is that pivot right there on the daily chart right here, 158.78 and then all time highs. Because the Russell's a little further off in terms of, of, um, of uh, hitting all time highs. It's still a little over 9% away from those all-time highs, but the uh, actual underlying patterns are pretty compelling. So right now it's inside quarter. So last quarter is inside quarter, and it's looking to break that inside condition on the quarterly chart. On the monthly chart, it's still inside month. So if you look at this pattern here, it's it's a, it's very bullish if it can break above last month's highs. So last month's highs is 158.78, which puts us right there, right? So that's the pivot we talked about before. If it can break above that pivot, which is in play now, then and you can come after the rest of these pivots here because look what's happening here, right? This is one of my favorite patterns. Inside bar, in the, so this is the monthly chart, so zoom in. Okay, inside bar and down. We had the big sell off in October, right? The Russell really got hit hard. Inside bar consolidation and down again. Okay, so then that's that was a great time to get short. Now here is where the, this is, this is January. So January, it went inside month. It was a big candle back to the upside again, but it was still inside month. So anyone who was, you know, long here, or short here, excuse me, and is just trailing their stops bar by bar, they would have put their stop up there. Okay. Once this pivot gets taken out and they go inside bar back up, they immediately go after that pivot and that pivot. Now, inside bar consolidation, and if they take it out, they're going after these guys there. Okay. So now it's just again. Uh, a matter of taking out those pivots if they can break above those levels. So the key thing you want to be watching for is if it can take out last month's high, if it still trades above it, very, very bullish condition. Okay. Let's look at the Dow now. So the Dow, very similar. Look at the three-month chart for a second. The macro picture, there's your outside-inside pattern. So zoom in again. Outside-inside on the Dow. And we're less than 2% away from all-time highs. So there's our outside, there's our inside. Break to the upside. This is on the quarterly chart, right? So this is an inside quarter and up. Now we just have to take all that pivot and then we're back at all time highs. Okay. So that's your chart on the on the Dow. We can go real faster because it's it's looking pretty strong because it's also inside month and up. So it's inside quarter and up, inside month and up. So very, very strong, you know, uh, macro charts, right? The, the quarterly chart and the monthly chart are very strong charts. And now we're going after that pivot there. On the weekly, green, right? We're trading above. We had inside bar break to the upside. On Friday, we end the day as an inside bar. And let's see where it goes on Monday. Inside bar, whichever way it breaks on Monday, right? Because it's all doing the same thing. The Dow, the Russell, they all had like, except for the Russell there. Uh, the Qs, I think, sorry, which one, which one had it there? Okay, so looks like just the Dow. Oh yeah, VIX and the Dow, right? So VIX, actually not even the VIX, so it just looks like the Dow has an inside bar condition. And so which way it breaks above there, you just want to watch your bias. So long as it can trade above the high of that four hour bar, then uh, you know you want to be going, continuing going long. Okay, let's now talk about uh, oil. Because oil was, was you know, one of the big stories this week because oil has been going up and up and up. And um, some of the oil stocks got hit pretty hard on, uh, on Wednesday, but they came back very, very strong on Friday. Now oil itself has not looked weak at all. So if you look at oil here now, is looking very strong. If you look at the oil on, you know, let's say the uh, the monthly chart, you know, it's a green month. It's been a green week all week. But look at the uh, the oil three month chart. So bring up three month chart on oil. 
what's what pattern what patterns are there it's our favorite pattern outside inside all right so there we go or inside quarter and up now and now we're going back to that pivot there that's the pivot that they're going after 8672 and if that lists you know if that seems really far away like wow that means oil is going to be really expensive look how far we've come right so oil came down really really hard here back in 2018 and now we're just matter just about reclaiming that range now am i saying it's going to happen in a straight line no it's probably not going to happen in a straight line although crazy things have happened or can happen uh, but certainly that's the the trend right now is to go up and slowly grind the way and take up that that pivot there okay so on the on the weekly chart you saw here it was an inside week and up condition and uh, you know at this point anytime you know so long as the trades above the whole week so long as it was above 68.33 it was a long only situation you do not want to be getting short on oil yes things like xop the oil expiration etf and oih got ha got hit a bit on wednesday um but they you know certainly res resume their uptrends on friday so take a look here at xop oil exploration so on the xop look inside month and up now sorry inside quarter and up inside month here it broke to the upside it came back in but the next month here april q4 the first month of q4 i uh, sorry q2 excuse me and then boom it's up to the uh broke above that level we're going back up again so this is a really really nice corrective action if you're if you're if you're watching, look at this sequence here. So here, okay, is your Tuesday, red day, outside day, inside, outside. Catches these guys off guard. Wednesday, they really sold it off. So it was 2.24% down. On Thursday, they get met with an inside bar. So you know, we've seen this pattern, or it's very similar patterns now throughout this video, right? So the sellers no longer were able to keep it down. And now the buyers have actually consolidated price inside the previous bars range now if we can just break above this high which was set on thursday then they're going to go after these pivots and that's what happened we actually gapped up on friday took out that pivot that pivot and then they went after you know uh wednesdays and tuesdays and monday's highs so sorry monday tuesday's highs and took out the you know last week's highs too so right into the highs now so all stocks again watch them they have a long way to go still possibly potentially and if they can stay above these ranges, right, above these monthly ranges, you want to continue to be long on those things. Long bond, right? We've been talking about the long bond for a while, and it's it's finally coming in. I posted that on the on the blog site earlier in the week, and that's because of a, a few things. Well, let's not say because, but you know, this is what we're definitely tracking, right? So we had this situation here with the uh, with the long bond. Now on the monthly chart, you have an outside inside pattern now. So, for, so, you know, just thinking about it from a rational perspective, what do you expect bonds to do this month? This bar here is a really, really wide bar, right? So this is a really wide bar for the long bond. It's like a five plus percent bar. You don't have that many bars like that. And if you open up inside the range, it's very hard to get outside of this bar because it's so large. Look, this, this bar is even larger. It's around 5.36%, but we opened at the ends of the range. And was able to peek out before it kept coming back in again. Here we open up right inside the range of this larger bar. What's the chance now the bonds are going to be able to pop out of this range? That's the question you have to ask yourself. Or is it just going to trade, you know, in a choppy sideways staccato fashion for the rest of the month? Because look what's happening now on the weekly. So, you know, there's a lot of opportunity for this thing to come back in and still be an inside bar. The weekly, here's our pattern. Outside to the upside, right? Now look at the broader part pattern. We have a broad information happening here. Okay, so that's the broader broad information. If you look at the three-month chart, okay, so there's your three-month chart. There's the broad information. It's the same one here, okay? Here, you break above that formation. They push it higher, so outside bar and up. As soon as it comes back in, below the low of this, then anyone here has to cover. And you get back inside the broad information, and you come out, you're now at risk of coming back through the other side. At the very least, this low here of 120.89 is back in play. So this pivot here now is the is the pivot in play. But it's very choppy going, right? So you know because you have the inside month condition, it's inside quarter as well, obviously. But uh, now you have this very choppy condition where you know we had this gap down, and then for the you know for the past couple of days, Thursday, Friday, it's been going back up slowly again. But uh, again, the the wider time frame chart, the weekly, is this one here, outside, inside, up, or sorry, outside and up. Now back through the range again is the potential. And look at Friday. This is what we we left with 
on the four-hour chart, outside, inside, which way does it break on Monday? My guess is that you know whichever way it breaks, the bias is down now. So you want to you know if it comes back up, you got to get ready to short this thing. If it shows weakness and does a reversal, it goes back down again. Okay, let's talk about gold. Gold is doing a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> so for gold, we don't have to talk too much about it. But it's, you know, essentially, here's the interesting pattern that's showing up um, on the daily, right? So we want to see how this breaks on on Monday. Inside, outside, outside, inside. So getting very, very choppy and volatile in this in this in this situation here. Which way does it break? Okay, so which way does this is, is that inside condition break to the upside or to the downside? The issue with gold is that it's just not doing anything, right? So we drew, we've drawn this box here now for the first, you know, since the beginning of our video series, and it's basically going inside year now for the past one, two, three. This is the third year in a row that it's inside of 2016's range. So you know, sorry if I don't get very excited about gold, but until it can break out of this little box inside of this range, yeah, the moves are 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 not um, are, are not exemplary. There's probably easier trades to be put on than trying to speculate on gold. That's kind of dead money because the ranges are very, very tight. Okay, so let's see which way gold breaks on, on Monday. And we'll, use, we'll be using gold simply as a way to, uh, to see which way the funds, which way funds are being allocated, right? So if we see people stepping into gold, then that tells us you know, things about the dollar um, and the safety and maybe geopolitical risk. But uh, certainly, you know, until it breaks out of that bigger range, there's nothing to get too excited about. If anything, I'm expecting this thing to break to the downside, but, you know, be, be prepared for it to break to the upside and see if it gets faded or not. Okay, so let's talk about Bitcoin. That was the other big story of the week, is that Bitcoin finally got above the monthly highs. We've been calling this for a long time now just to watch it, right? So don't do anything until it takes out these monthly highs. And certainly it took a while. You know, we, this played out exactly how we wanted it to play out. And I hope you got long on, this, on some of these cryptos like I did. But um, we were watching the situation here on the monthly, right? So we had inside, outside, inside. And I was saying, just wait for the monthly to break. And had you just bought the monthly signal, not even gotten fancy and gone, not gone on a lower time frame. Look from the break point here, the high was 40, 42.10. To the highs there, you had a 28% move in Bitcoin alone, just in the monthly chart. So it was that easy to catch uh, on, you know, this past week. It was a really easy trade. And uh, you know, I'm still long Bitcoin as well as um, 10 other cryptos. So if you look at Bitcoin on the, on the, on the quarterly chart, which I don't think a lot, a lot of people do, and they're missing some interesting analysis here, is that this is a classic inside bar reversal. You know, I was really hoping we get one of these, and this is what we got. So that monthly chart triggered the quarterly chart. So the break above 42.82.4 was the high of Q1. It did break above that in that sequence and caused this quarterly pattern to set up. So here's our inside bar reversal. What is an inside bar reversal? Well, there's your inside bar. It breaks to the downside. Okay, It goes inside bar, meaning anyone who got short here now really has to hope it doesn't come back up through here otherwise it's going to reverse so and we've got short here now now they're coming after their pivots and i call that inside bar reversal so they're coming back up against these guys and that and those guys so that that is the uh, challenge for anyone who's still short here now i think there are a lot of people who are still short so the short covering rally um could still continue on to this coming week one coin that i think is uh, always fun to watch is bitcoin cash because it's a very hated coin there's a lot of short sellers in that, and it's had some very explosive moves. And I'm, I'm long this as well, uh, full disclaimer. So um, Bitcoin Cash inside quarter and up. So that quarterly chart triggered. And if you take a look at Bitcoin Cash on the monthly, this is why I'm very bullish on this. Here's a sequence on the monthly chart. Outside and down, followed by two inside bars, meaning the shorts were not able to push it below these subsequent levels. Now the buyers are able to take advantage of that, break above these highs, and now these pivots are, come, are, are being tested. So anyone who got short here now, where are they going to put their stops, right? So if you look at the weekly chart, where are they going to put their stops? So if you're short one in here somewhere, look, the first stop here is the gap fill this, right? And then they could go after these guys here. So that's six six fifty eight forty, which is another you know hundred percent move. That's very very possible with uh, Bitcoin Cash because if you saw what happened uh, this past week, it moved in 
it moved up 90% in a, in a week span, right? So we had days here on Monday and Tuesday where we had 40% plus days. So this day was 40 up 40%. This was up a one point over 40%, but it came in and only closed up 25% or 24%. So this is a very bullish coin, even though you may not like the, the fundamentals of it. Right now, it's short covering. It's a pure, purely technical trade. Okay, so let's uh, you know, let's cover a few more things very quickly before we uh, we close things off. So for the coming week, um, you know, we're expecting the, the the bias to be upwards unless things change. Of course, we want to be watching our levels. Earnings kind of start again on Friday. So crazy enough, you know, the earnings earnings season is right around the corner. Friday is kind of the, the the big kickoff day as the banks start to report. JP Morgan being the first one, so so watch JPM on on Friday to see how that sets the tone. Um, but the, the underlying sectors are very strong right now. So if we take a look, let's take a look at um, a really wide picture, and you'll see why I'm, I'm quite um, you know I'm, I'm quite bullish right now. If we look at some of the underlying sectors and some of the macro charts, let's start with XLF. XLF. That's the financials, right? So there we have our inside and here inside month condition trying to go to the upside. So if the banks start reporting earnings that are good, we have that that opportunity of the chance here now to break to the upside and trigger this this uh, inside bar to go to the upside. On the weekly chart, look at financials. There's our outside bar pattern that goes that's countered with a with a green bar. As soon as it took out the high of this, right of this high. Now they're testing, they're going after that pivot there. Same thing on the KRE chart, which is the regional banks. Exact same thing, but a little more juice. So here, you've already broken above this bar. Well, actually, it's still inside bar there, but uh, I'm just going to delete this line here. Okay. So here, once you break above that, there's our inside bar reversal pattern right there, and they're going to go after these highs once again. Okay, so here, KRE. Going after that pivot right there right now, 55.93. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the other sectors very quickly. So we talked about tech already, financials. Actually, I just want to take a quick look at the monthly chart and the financials here. Yeah, so we saw this happen here inside month. So now what, where does it go from here, right? So let's go back to the three-month chart. So energy, we talked about that already. But here, example, outside inside pattern on energy, the quarterly chart. And it broke above there now, so it's quarter and up. As long as it can stay above 67.42, which is where it is right now, 67.61, we're going after that pivot there. So as long as oil keeps moving higher, then energy stocks have a, you know have um, have some gains ahead of them. Um, healthcare, and the same exact same pattern. So we have so many sectors all trading the same pattern. Some are closer to all-time highs than others, but here's the one that's setting up on healthcare. Outside inside pattern, if you break above there, we're testing those highs once again. Okay, discretionary, exact same thing. Outside inside and getting very, very close to those all time highs. Look at that, right? So I'm looking at this quadrant in the corner here. So we're very close to those all time highs. So just for discretionary, I'll just draw it in really quickly. Oops, wrong, wrong one. Let's uh, draw it here. So look at that. We're less than. We're less than 0.5% away from all-time highs on the on the uh, discretionary ETF XLY. XLU, by the way, utilities already at all-time highs. So this thing went outside quarter and up in Q1, and it took out the all-time highs right there. Okay, so that's all-time highs for XLU. Okay, uh, and one final one to show to talk about, and that's XLB. That's the basic materials. And now it's, this thing's gone inside bar reversal and up. So there's our inside bar that went to the downside. It got countered with an inside bar and it went up on the quarter now. So now they're coming after that pivot, then they're going after these pivots. So inside bar reversal on the quarterly charts up. So for the most part, all the sectors are looking very, very strong right now. And of course, things could change very quickly. So you want to keep your eyes on those levels. You want to see, you know, can they come back into these levels here? And that's, you know, that's what we'll be watching for. Is like if the bears and sellers can take over, then you want to see them pull things back in, back into the ranges again, and that's going to be your first indication that there could be a possible reversal. But until you know you can get back into these levels, there's no point trying to get short, short early. That's it's a it's a you're fighting against the, the you know the the tides at that point. So do yourself a favor and wait for some of these levels to get taken out before jumping into to these shorts if you if you're if you really have short on the brain. 
So just a, a few more charts to share before we wrap things up. Long video this week, so I apologize for that, but a lot of information to share. Three charts to look at for, for the coming quarter, actually. We have three charts that I'm gonna share with you now, all inside quarter and up. So that they are AMD, okay? AMD inside quarter and up. So we're still far from the uh, from those all-time highs. So here, it just broke above the last quarter's highs, and now we're testing these pivots here. AMD looking very strong, right? So any pullbacks, I'm not saying buy right into momentum and buy straight into the highs, but on, on pullbacks, on corrective action, AMD would be a great name to get into so long as it stays above that, that high there. You want that condition to exist, so it has to stay above 2811, but those kind of pull, small pullbacks you can be buying into. Okay, AMD, NVIDIA, another another strong tech name. NVIDIA is look, look at this potential. There's your outside, right? They had a, had a terrible Q4. NVIDIA really got smashed, you know, in terms of a 50% plus sell-off. Got countered with a 34% rally in Q, uh, Q1, and now it's gone in Q2 inside bar and up. So how does it, you know, it's, it's possible they can come back up through this range again, given enough time. Okay. That guy, as long as it stays above this level, 185, you want to be bullish on, on NVIDIA. You want to be buyers there. All these pullbacks for the next three months, you want to be buying pullbacks on NVIDIA anytime it's still above 185. The last one to share, a little of a slower name, but some one that, again, you can add to your portfolio on pullbacks, IBM. And you have a very, very clear pivot to go after right here. Outside, inside, and now it's gone outside, inside, and back up. Okay, so there, above 142.12, which it is, you know, it's trading at 143 plus now, the pivot there is 154.36. And that's an easy trade to go after, right? So from this bar's current close to there, you have an easy 7% move there if you can find some good pullbacks to get in on, and then you have a good 7% uh, trade there. That's going to be, you know, you have a, a, a very good target there that if it can continue going up, you have a very high likelihood of it taking out, and you can take some profits there. All right. So I hope this was helpful once again. I wish you a good trading week and best trading success. Happy trading.